Hello everyone, Valoros here, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to try, since I have about, let's see, 17 hours in the game already, even though I kind of suck at it, but I've read a lot into it, and I, and I know a lot of what it's about. So right now I'm just on my second save file, and this is going to be a, a sort of should you buy Enter the Gungeon video. So, Into the Gungeon is a rogue roguelite game, similar to The Binding of Isaac and Nuclear Throne. And so you start off with these four playable characters, too, you can choose. You can have the Marine, who's just your standard character. He has ammo, he has extra health. The Pilot, who has a lockpick. Uh, pistol, but he doesn't do that much. Well, his gun's are really inaccurate. The convict, who does more dam, well, who does a good, decent amount of damage, but has lower health. The hunter, who has a dog that can also find you items on room clear, and it's actually very nice. And into the gungeon, it's. Well, you're traversing through the floors of this, of, well, yeah, the gungeon. In each floor, they have, um, the enemies, the gun dead. I'm not exactly sure how many floors they have on a run, but they're filled with these guys. And there's a lot of different enemy types. And it's just my type of game. So if you like into a roguelike game, or just into like bullet hellish over the top shooter, I guess you might like this game. Because each, well in each run it's sort of different, because they're all procedural, well they're all generated. So each run, so the gameplay doesn't get stale. Okay, let me just show you guys this, this is the Ammo Nomicon. It keeps track of... Uh, the bosses you killed. As you can see, I only killed one because this is a uh, save file I just started. The enemies you've ran into already. And there's a good bit of enemies. The items you picked up, because there's items like passive items, active items, like most roguelikes. And the guns, which there's an insane amount of which was one of the huge selling points about this game for me just because of all the insane items and weapons you can get from this so if you're just into like insane weapons and items I would say this would be a game for you too but this is a game that is not very easy to win. really difficult the, one of the main mechanics is the dodge roll feature, where you can dodge, you can dodge past bullets, but only like the first half of the dodge roll. Let you go through the bullets. And the floors too, they also have a shop on each floor, item rooms, where you can get, well item rooms as in chests. What you would need keys to open. They also have NPCs in the game that you can unlock through each cell door, which gives you like access to new shops, new well, mini game type things, and all of that. The first one you really unlock, because I've seen everyone unlock it first, is the um, credits, which you can use to unlock more guns in the gun shop. And you get the credits for killing the bosses. Other than that, you have your keys, which, like I said, is open up chest, your active item, and your currency, which is for the shops on each floor. Another mechanic in this game, too, is the dodge roll feature. Well, no, not dodge roll. Where you can flip tables. You can also, with barrels and things, you can just push them. 
ones that let you. You can push them around. And there's also a good bit of secrets in the game, too. You can also shoot the barrels and they explode. You can do that with the explosive barrels, too. And all the enemies, too, I love it because they have to me some of them are adorable, but yeah, they're all gun themed. And let me just come in here. This is one of the shops I was talking about. It usually sells like consumables, keys, half, well, keys, health, and sometimes ammo. And he usually sells like either a weapon or an active item or passive item. But it's all, I think that's all random too. There are secret rooms in this area, well in this game too, on each floor. Which I'm not exactly sure how it quite works yet. Another mechanic though in the game is blanks. I'll try to show you that once we get to the boss. But yeah, so I would say if you're into like bullet hell games, bullet hellish games, and rogue, rogue lights like the Binding of Isaac and Nuclear Throne, I would pick this up. But it is very challenging. It does have some of the same flaws like many rogue, rogue lights have. That some people just don't, well, can't, don't like some roguelite. But, yeah, like this one, what I mean by the, um, there's just one of them, and it shoots the word bullet. But what you saw there, that armor I had on, how it just went away, that's because of the... Well, when you lose armor, it triggers a blank, too. So, that's somewhat how the blanks work. What it is really is just a knockback. It knocks all the enemies back, and it clears all of the projectiles in the room. So, it's useful if you can use it right. Like me, I can't use it too well. Here's the other item. And we got Ring of Mimic Friendship, which is an at well passive item. Because they do have mimics in this game too. What's your chests that just attack you and they're fucking insane? I don't think that ammo is there anymore that we had gotten. Unless it was in a different room, but I'm not sure. Because there is rats in this game that if you leave an item on the ground for too long, it will eat it. So the best thing to do is not leave the items on the ground that you want or are thinking about coming back for later. I don't think it works with a health or the HP. I've never seen it. Steal HP for me, but yeah, this is one of the bosses that I can actually play. I'll show you a better use of that. This is one of the easier bosses to explore one. I'm pretty sure there's like five in the game. And I barely scratched the surface of the game so far. There is a crazy amount of items and guns that I have not even and with this too, how you get more HP in the game is usually by beating the boss without taking any damage. Well, yeah, any HP. Armor doesn't count as long as you have enough. But as soon as you lose HP, you can't get a mastery, what it's called, and. You won't get uh, an HP upgrade. Ow. And yeah, so as you can see, it's kind of difficult because all the bullets flying at the screen, you have to be precise on the dodge rolls.
precise on the blanks, know when to use it, know when to dodge roll and all of that. I'm not the best at the game, but I'm just saying if you like roguelike games similar to Binding of Isaac and Nuclear Throne, you might enjoy this. Or if you're just into like pretty difficult games, pretty difficult bullet hell type games, I would pick it up. It's like 15 bucks on Steam, but like, and about 15 bucks on PlayStation 4. I think those are the only two things it's out for right now. I'll put a link in the description for this Steam link. But yeah, so I would say you shouldn't get it if you if you don't really like difficult bullet hell type games, but yeah, or if you don't like restarting after you after you like after you complete a run because after you die what happens is you start with nothing except the basics that you had before when you pick the character then you have to find your items find your find your weapons and it just goes from there I think the runs are usually around an hour to a half an hour to a half or an hour I think it might be longer at least an hour to complete a full run but I'm not really sure since I've only made it to like the second floor but yeah so is it a buy that is up for you guys to decide for me it was worth it just because the crazy amount of guns they had and items and how much crazy fun is just in this game but yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I don't know how much should you buy I'm probably going to post. It just depends on if it's a game that... If it's a game that I've played on this channel. Or if it's just a game... That I enjoyed. Or and that I've played. Or that I've played. Because a lot of the games I've played, I enjoy, I'm just trying to help people out in case they want to, if they weren't quite sure if they wanted to buy the game or not. Because it was worth the 15 bucks for me for this game. But it's all up to you if you want to spend your money on Into the Gungeon. But yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Leave a like if this video helped you out and subscribe for more content in the future. I'll see you all next time.